Christmas is on its way, and waking up to snow falling gently outside put me in such a mood to paint something pretty for Christmas. I'm trying a new painting technique that I've never tried before until today, actually given to me by one of you viewers. And I have to say, I was pleased with the results. So without further ado, let's grab our watercolor supplies and get started. Besides my paper, paints, and water, I've got two brushes I'll be using today, a small and large round brush. Now these don't have exact numbers printed on them, but I'd say the large is about a six and the small may be a two or a three. Now I often do teach you how to draw the outlines if they're needed for painting, but I've been so excited just to get to this painting part today that I didn't actually film and edit the drawing portion into this video. Instead, for your convenience, I have a purchasable printable outline for sale for a minimal price on my Etsy shop that you can use as a reference if you'd prefer to draw it yourself, or you can simply trace the outline onto your watercolor paper and you're ready to go. And actually, I have a Christmas gift surprise for all of you concerning my Etsy outlines that I will share with you in just a few minutes. So make sure you stick around for that. You're not going to want to miss it. Links to both this outline as well as any of the products and supplies you see me using today will be listed in the description of this video if you'd like to look into them further. Also, for a quick reference as to the size of my paper, I've actually cut this to be an 8 by 10 size today because I'm planning to frame and display this in my house when I'm done. But I also have card sizes available for sale as well if you'd rather go that route. Now that my paper is taped down to help prevent some of the warping, I'm ready to mix up some of my colors using the larger brush. I'll start with some cadmium red. Then I've got cadmium orange. And lastly, some alizarin crimson that I've darkened up just a little bit with a hint of ivory black. Okay, now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I had a viewer give me a tip on how to make lovely, shiny, vibrant red berries. So I'm gonna take his advice and give it a try today. He told me to try painting the berry using cadmium orange first as a base color, painting around the little white highlight. Then while that orange color is still wet, we add in the cadmium red right on the top. Now he might do this different, but I am putting the red on the majority of the berry except for a small section right on the opposite side of the highlight where I'm going to leave a little bit of the orange showing through to serve as the reflected light of the berry. Then I'll take some of this darkened alizarin crimson and use just a tiny bit of that to paint in the shadow, mostly on the edge that's opposite of the highlight, as well as maybe just a little bit in more of the center of the berry by the orange reflected light. The secret here that really brightens up these berries is actually the cadmium orange. It makes them vibrant and saturated with color, and the addition of the alizarin crimson as the shadow creates some really great dimension. And as a tip, if you ever find that the reflected light is getting overtaken by the other colors, you can dry your brush off onto a paper towel and use the dry brush to wipe off some of this extra color. Now, because I'm enjoying painting these berries in more of a realistic way today, I'm going to go ahead and paint all of them this way. However, it is a little more time consuming and it might be harder to get the hang of if you're a beginner. So if you'd rather, feel free to paint the berries using just the cadmium red. You can still paint a gradient of color, creating some dimension by painting the shadowed edge of the berry with the red and then using a tiny bit of water, more like a damp brush, not too wet, to spread the color to the rest of the berry going around the highlight. Also, to save us a little bit of watch time on this video so it's not too long, and because each berry is going to be painted exactly the same way, I'm going to skip around and fast forward this part just a little bit, but feel free to pause the video if you need to so you can get them all painted. 
you really can see a more realistic and vibrant difference in painting the berries this way. So to my fellow artist who gave me the idea to try this cadmium orange as a base color, and you know who you are, thank you. I hope you don't mind me sharing this tip. And as a side note, for these smaller berries, I am switching over to the smaller brush to make it a little bit easier to paint them. Also, as another tip, to have a better understanding of how light and shadow works on a sphere object, I did create a video probably almost two years ago now that explains all the important parts of shading an object that you might find helpful. Of course, this video was created a long time ago, so my editing and recording skills may not be as good as they are today, but the information is still useful. I'll leave a link to that in this video's description as well. All right, well done on all those berries. It took a minute to get them all done, but I'm pretty pleased with the results. So moving on to the rose, I'm going to freshen up my cadmium red and my dark alizarin crimson really quick. Then I'll start painting the darker sections of the rose first, and I'll leave the lighter and more highlighted ones for in just a few minutes. The intersections of the rose will be the darkest of the whole flower, and I am sort of skipping about every other section here to leave a spot for the highlights. A lot of the time as I paint these, I'll paint the section with a very small amount of water first, but it's not going to be so wet that it's dripping or puddling. It's just enough so that when I paint on the cadmium red next, then it can spread out through the petal a little bit. Then while this paint is still wet, I'll add just a touch of the alizarin crimson to create a darker and shadowed look. Now this is going just right at the inner edge side of the petal. I like to try to encourage and challenge you as artists to explore your creativity and push your artistic boundaries so that you can become better. I like to share with you tips, techniques, and step-by-step -step tutorials that will help you succeed. So if this is something you're looking for, I hope you'll consider subscribing.
All right, those are the sections that I am wanting to be the very darkest on this rose. So let's move on to the outer, lighter petals now. I will again be using the wet on wet technique for these because I really want the color to spread gently and be a little bit lighter. And painting the water before the paint can really help with this. So after I've painted the water, I'll add some cadmium red just like I did before, but I really want this color to stay mostly at the inner edge. So I'll paint it here and then allow it to spread out with the water just a little bit but I do want the outer edges to either have little or no color at all. So if my paint starts to seep farther than I'd like, I'll dry my brush on my paper towel and use the bristles to wipe some of it off. Then I'll use just a tiny bit of the alizarin crimson just to darken up a small space of this inner edge, but be careful not to use too much of this dark color, only just a whisper. I'll paint the remaining petals in really this exact same way, painting with water first and keeping the dark color on the inner edge and no color on the outer edge. You'll notice I will skip around a little bit. I'm just making sure that each petal is completely dry before I paint the one right next to it. This is going to help prevent them from bleeding into each other. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a little Christmas gift for you concerning my Etsy shop. So, for a limited time, two weeks only, I will be having a special Christmas sale where every outline in my shop will be 20% off. This is two weeks only, starting today, the 7th, and ending on the 21st of December. So make sure you take advantage of this offer and get all the outlines that you're interested in before it's over. This is just my way of saying thank you to all of you for your overwhelming support and love. Merry Christmas to you all. All right, well done on this rose. The good news here is that the hardest parts to do in this painting are now over. So we've gotten all the red down and all that's left to do is the greenery. So for our colors, I've got here some pure sap green. Then I'll take some gamboge and mix it with some sap green for a nice yellow green. Now I'll take some hooker's green and mix it with some phthalo blue for a blue green. Then for these leaves, instead of painting a base coat of water, I'm actually going to pick one of these green colors. For example, this yellow green. Then I'll paint the entire leaf with that color. Then while that color is still wet, I'll add in one or two of the other colors in just a couple of spots and let that blend in together a little bit. Now, I'm not painting every leaf exactly the same. I will be using the same technique, but different colors. In fact, with this leaf, I think it might actually be fun to add in just a hint of red on this edge. This is the time for you to use your creativity and just have some fun. Make each leaf different and unique. Have some dark, have some light, have some more yellow green, some more blue green, and some with red. The choice is up to you. I'm going to jump around with these leaves a little bit while I let each one dry. And you know, even though it's fun to paint with all different colors and mix colors together, it can also be a fun challenge to paint with a limited color palette as well. So if you feel up to it, you should definitely try this little winter tree landscape that I created last winter in which I only used one color to paint the entire thing. It's really kind of fun to try.
All right. When all of the leaves are completely dry, use a small brush, take some of the sap green, and paint some nice thin vein lines down the center of each leaf. And now, for one of the final pieces to this Christmas painting, let's paint in some pine needles or branches. I'm going to use some pure hooker's green and a small brush for this. Paint a line of color for the center of the pine branch, and then use light, quick movements with the tip of the brush to paint on the needles. I like to paint these pine needles starting at the center line and then paint them using an outward motion because it naturally paints the needles a little thicker at the base and then thinner at the tips. Also, it might be helpful to untape your paper at this point and turn your paper around to be able to reach some of these pine needles better. I didn't do that here and found that the needles on this left side were harder to do. So next time I'll probably untape and turn my paper around. I also feel like I need to add just one more really small set of pine needles right here that I didn't actually have drawn on the outline, but you can use your judgment on that. All right, the very last thing I'll add are some small, thin branch marks on some of these berries using some burnt umber. Then at this point, you can call the painting done if you'd like, or you can add in some words like Merry Christmas to the bottom of your page. This is a special calligraphy marker that has a flexible tip that I like to use for things like this. These will also be listed in the supply section of the description of this video. And that's it for this stunningly beautiful Christmas flower painting. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch during this busy time of year. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side. Merry Christmas.